When you want to become a worldwide traveler, airports are likely to become the kind of place where you'll spend a lot of your time. You'll find yourself killing time at coffee shops or browsing through the shelves of bookshops to see if you can find anything different that you haven't seen in the other 10 shops you've already just passed. Or maybe you're just looking for the same item at a cheaper price because let's be honest here, those shops are... Ugh. Either way, airports are also your gate into a new country and a new culture, and they're also a window into what you'll be experiencing during your visits. But some airports around the world are known to welcome people with quite a rough entrance. Today I'll be showing you 10 of the most dangerous airports in the world, which is honestly a sentence I thought I'd never say. Perhaps airplane flights, but never airports. It's actually a lot more dangerous than you would expect. We're gonna have a look at some narrow runways, some steep landings, and a few other things that'll make you remember the airport as vividly as other highlights of your travels. The number one on this list is an airport that I know for sure I want to experience, but I just hope I'm mentally prepared for it. All these airports promise landings that can be quite traumatic. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Number 10. Tioman Airport, Malaysia. Off mainland Malaysia, there's an island called Tioman, which is also home to the only airport within the region. As you get closer to Tioman, you'll spot a lot of greenery and deep blue waters around. If we're being honest, it sounds quite tropical and paradise-like. You'll also notice a small line of concrete near the coast, which happens to be the runway of the airport. This runway is only one way, as there is privately owned land nearby that keeps the airport from expanding. Pilots are expected to fly as if they're coming straight into the mountains and then make a sharp L-shaped turn to face the runway and finally land. Through the years, many light private plane accidents have been reported. Mostly there have not been any casualties, but you gotta wonder what the people in those planes think about their VIP flights ending in such a rough way. Eh, hopefully they gotta run for their money. Number 9. Pero Airport, Bhutan. What would it be like to be one of only 17 qualified pilots to land on an airport? I definitely would feel a lot of pressure. And that's the case in Paro Airport, the entry point for these travelers who seek to explore the legendary kingdom of Bhutan. This is an airport that only operates during daytime. Landing on this airport is a very thrilling experience. The airport is surrounded by many mountain peaks that can be as high as 18,000 feet tall. It's as if nature itself is protecting Bhutan from outsiders, only allowing the brave ones to come through. If you peek through the window, you'll probably feel like the bottom of the plane is going to hit one of the mountaintop homes underneath. But there are some focus points that the experienced pilots use as a reference to avoid any unwanted incidents. When you get to see the beauty of Bhutan, you realize it's all worth that little plane ride. Number 8. Narsarok Airport, Greenland. Narsarok Airport is one out of two ice-covered airports in our list. Ice itself makes it already one of the most dangerous airports in the world, but what really makes things worse is the harsh weather conditions and the low visibility that come with it. This place is often hit by strong winds that make it difficult for pilots to have a smooth landing. Also, Narsarok Airport is close to some active volcanoes, which pretty much make it impossible to fly once they start erupting. Any ash particles that go into an active engine can turn into a terrible and tragic accident, and why does this airport exist in the first place? Who would even want to go there? Well, Greenland is a terrific spot to see the Northern Lights, and no threatening airport can keep visitors from flying in. I mean, to keep me from flying in. I guess it's a visual experience you don't want to miss, but I would be on the safe side, personally. Number 7. Corcheval International Airport, France. So far, I've mentioned some airports where landings are rough, but now I want to present to you an airport where taking off can be quite challenging as well. With a narrow and short runway of 1,700 feet long, Corcheval International Airport is a place with a slope that makes it difficult for pilots to take off. And when it comes to landing, only a selected group of pilots are allowed to access it through one of the nearby deep valleys. These pilots only have one chance at landing, by the way. With such a small and tricky space, the plane has to perfectly fit into the runway or else it won't be able to make it. You know, this is just a thought, but they could, you know, make another place to land? I don't know, just food for thought, France. Number 6. McMurdo Station, Antarctica. In case you're wondering how do people get to Antarctica, well, here's one option. The ice runway at McMurdo Station, the second ice-covered airport of our list. This right here is a runway that's made out of white ice, which is a material as thick as four inches of snow. The fact that the runway is made out of ice can give you an idea of how dangerous it can be to land here. McMurdo Station is used by the U.S. Antarctic Program during the summer and is located at the southernmost part of Ross Island. 
There are no lights on the runway, so pilots need to learn how to land blindly. The Ice Runway is the major airport in the continent. We can only imagine what goes on at smaller airports out there, and I honestly don't want to imagine what goes on at these airports. Number 5. Gisborne Airport, New Zealand Gisborne is a small and quiet city in the northeastern part of New Zealand. This city is known for being the first one in the world to see the sun every day. On top of that, it has an amazing coastline, dense forests, a perfect place for agriculture, surfing, fishing, and wine. But this place is also famous for having an airport that doesn't necessarily make me want to land there. The Gisborne Airport, with three grass runways and one main concrete runway, intersects with the National Railway Line. Trains actually pass on the same spot where the planes land. Oh, that's just... that's horrifying. Either way, the staff at the airport are really good at coordinating landings to avoid any planes crashing into trains. Uh, I'm still not sure I would feel safer on board of the plane or the train. Both seem quite risky. Number 4. Madeira Airport, Portugal. And here's another airport where only a few selected pilots are allowed to fly into, and I'm kind of noticing a chain here. The Madeira Airport in Portugal, which is now actually called after one of Portugal's biggest football stars, Cristiano Ronaldo International Airport. This airport's runway was so small that an extension had to be built on an artificial island, with about 180 columns holding it up. Which is quite scary given the fact that there's a lot of weight that goes on the runway. God, what are those columns even made of? So, what made them build this ambitious extension? It actually has to do with an incident that happened back over in 1977 when TAP Air Flight 425 was coming from Brussels, Belgium to Madeira. In the midst of threatening weather conditions and a short runway to land into, the flight crew decided to proceed to land the plane. Unfortunately, the surrounding conditions made the plane start hydroplaning and the aircraft eventually slid off the runway and crashed on the beach. The plane hit a nearby bridge and split in two upon crashing. It then bursted into flames, and the event became TAP's most tragic event to date. Even sadder, 156 out of 164 people lost their lives that day. That's how authorities came to realize that the airport's runway needed to be extended. Today, the runway is in between high mountain peaks and the ocean, with regular strong winds, which is still quite dangerous. For that reason, pilots have to train on a simulator to prove that they're worthy of taking a plane to Madeira. With new regulations and strict pilot training, the Madeira Airport authorities promised their visitors a safe landing. But promises can only go so far. Number 3. Alexandros Papadiamantis Airport, Greece. The next airport on this list is located on the island of Skiathos in Greece. This airport is known as the one with the shortest runway in Europe. And you know, with our previous entry, I think we all know why that's a bad idea. This airport was built over a man-made piece of land that connects Giathos with a smaller Lazarata Island, turning both into one huge island. Some people say that this airport is not only short, but also very narrow. When pilots come close to landing, an optical illusion makes the runway look shorter in their eyes. Luckily, as you'd probably expect it by now, pilots who want to land on this airport need to go through a serious training regimen before being allowed to fly here. The airport is also very close to a public road, which allows spectators to stand nearby and have the planes fly only a few meters above their heads. Landings can be quite thrilling for the passengers inside the plane, but I'm sure that people watching from outside are wondering whether one of these planes might fall on them one day. I certainly hope not. That could be a lot of lawsuits right there. But hey, that's a good spot for a lot of pictures, hmm? Now it's time for the day's best pick. For today, I have this picture of a plane landing on water. Is it that the airport is on the water, or is it that the plane had an emergency landing? Before I show you my last two picks for the day, I want to acknowledge that no airport is too dangerous when you have a well-trained pilot on board. While some places on Earth don't have enough space for a proper and super safe airport, authorities around the world have made sure to handpick the best pilots to fly into the most dangerous airports in existence. So, you're pretty much in good hands. Number 2. On Cotton Airport, Honduras. In a wide and dense mountainous area, it comes as no surprise that a dangerous airport would be located here, in Toncanton Airport. The international airport that serves Tegucigalpa, the capital city of Honduras. What makes this airport so dangerous is the fact that the pilot needs to make a very precise 45 degree turn to make it onto the landing area. Once the plane is in the right position, it only has a few seconds to start a quick descent while keeping its underside from scraping the rough land below. Since it's inside a valley, strong winds are constantly present. 
This forces pilots to zigzag their way down into the runway. They also have to avoid all the mountain peaks during takeoff. It's like going through an obstacle course. I really do admire the pilots that can deal with all that. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Number 1. Lukla Airport, Nepal the Lukla Airport is the most convenient for travelers who want to go to Mount Everest. It's right on the Himalayan mountains at 9,325 feet high and it has a very narrow runway. A runway with a 2,000 mile drop on the end and a stone wall on the other. Your pilot has no choice other than landing exactly on the right spot to bring you out safely. Sometimes power goes off and the pilots have no choice other than keeping clear, constant, and precise communication with air controllers until they land. Otherwise, their landing can be quite eventful. With such a narrow path, the airport has been the scenario for some pretty crazy incidents. The most recent one being a small plane that veered off the runway and hit two parked helicopters. Three people who were at the helipad died as a result of this event. With so many things to be concerned about, anyone would think this is the kind of airport that must be avoided. However, this airport is very popular, in fact. After all, who doesn't want to see Mount Everest? Seems like landing on this airport can be as challenging as going up those big mountains that surround it. I know for sure that I actually would like to go there. I just hope that I'd be ready for the experience. Would you go on a flight to any of these airports, or would you rather take a bus or a train? What is the safest way of transportation for you, and what are some crazy airport stories you know? Let us know in the comments section down below, and I hope you all have a great day, everybody. Laters!